and there are certain levels which are allowed. Usually it's per microgram a day. But for you to understand how well we are protected, although still I don't consider it to be, it should be zero. Let's say if we have 0.6 micrograms a day is this amount of lead exposure that we have today account for, according to the Prop 65. What exactly it means? This means that if you expose that number, one microgram or two micrograms a day for different compounds, and you are exposed to this every day until you become 70 years old, then cancer incidence will increase by just one in a population of 100,000 people. That's strict. The US and California laws think about this. And of course, you cannot get to the point when you can just massively just contaminate area and cause all these health problems, mostly uncovered or uh, still needs to be uh, discovered if there is a proper investigation. So something which cannot be done in the Western countries. Western companies are going to other countries like Armenia, the same company which was mentioned, Dino Gold, also has another two mines in Bulgaria and one mine in South, South Africa. And they are doing, applying the local standards and uh, the, 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 the government is not enforcing laws which are in the books. This is why they are, of course, obviously reaping the super profits and they are allowed to contaminate it. We have seen how it's contaminated. Just they, they just pour all this into the valleys and rivers. Now, what is the problem with this kind of contamination? Because one thing is there is certain a concentration of lead that over here you touch and there is a thermal exposure. Another thing is that when you pollute with heavy metals environment, the problem is with heavy metals, it is absolutely non-biodegradable. The good thing is that, if you can say the good thing, if you contaminate a certain area with something which can biodegrade after a while, then you can say, okay, three years from now, five years from now, that area will become more or less safe. None of these metals that I mentioned, if it stays in soil for another 1,000 years, molybdenum atom will remain a molybdenum atom. Nothing will happen to molybdenum atom or lead will stay as a lead over there. The only thing that can cover, and that can happen, those heavy metals which have, let's say, lower, I'm sorry to be technical, lower oxidation state, because of the exposure to oxygen under the sun, because of some elevated temperatures, can get oxygen further. So they can increase their oxidation state, which is, guess what, a bad news. Because the higher the oxidation state of the heavy metals are more toxic they are. Chromium-2 has a minimal toxicity. Chromium-6 is an incredibly strong percentage of the Again, going back to the early So this is the problem. It's not biodegradable. Another thing is that we shouldn't consider those areas. You have seen these artificial lakes. It won't stay like this because obviously it will migrate further for an obvious reason. There is a circulation in the nature and they are supposed to cover that to make it really safe. There should be a thick layer of concrete, something like the, the, the waste which is used in, in nuclear, nuclear plants. It's not there. It, they, they cannot invest that amount of money. Obviously, they are not doing it. So I'm sure that if we start analyzing what is happening <coughs> five or 10 years from now, if it does not happen again, the area of contamination would be much higher. Now, what is the third problem with heavy metals? When they enter the body, it's very difficult to get rid of it. Very difficult. If you take lead, for example, if you have acute poisoning with lead, the only thing the doctors can do in your ER if you go to the emergency room because it's, you have a symptoms of acute poison, they can clean up the blood system. But the lead also has saturated all other tissues from the brain all the way the bone, all the way to the bones. And even if you eliminate that symptoms of acute poisoning with lead in particular, there will be a high concentration of lead in the bones for decades. 
There are some chelating agents, it's true. This is a, our domain of the complex in heavy metals with certain ligands, etc. But we cannot get rid of it. If you measure the concentration of lead in a bloodstream after a while, you will see that it's returning to the previous level because bones very slowly desorb the lead into the blood system. So unfortunately, science is not there that we can take these people who say how much your body is contaminated, let, let us invest that much money, clean up your body. It's impossible. Cannot be done. So you can see how irreversible these issues are. And those, the, the tailing dumps which are there, it is much worse than chemical warfare. Chemical warfare are organic compounds. And even that area, you, you might think that what can be worse than chemical warfare? Heavy metals. Because chemical warfare, there are some chemists here sitting, we know that we can expose it to, let's say, strong basic agents, we can deactivate. In military, this is the way that classical chemical warfare is deactivated. It doesn't matter what you do to these complexes, heavy metals, organic compounds, inorganic compounds, strong acids, strong base, etc. Nothing can be done. You cannot chemically deactivate heavy metal. You can easily chemically deactivate chemical warfare, even the worst form. This is how it's much worse than the chemical warfare. Now, why these things are happening? Let's ask ourselves, Armenians living in the United States, why is it these things are happening? It's a corruption. And you realize that corruption, I would like you to realize, it's not only about Armenia. Corruption was epidemic during the Soviet times. It's still epidemic, but this is much more than it was during the communist times. Because at the time, people were kind of afraid of communist party, and they were stealing, but not stealing to the same extent, right? Now it is much more because there is no communist party. Right? There are some officials which can be interested in certain certain decisions that they make on the legislative level, on the executive level, etc. What I'm trying to say that I don't like when people are start whining, oh, this is Armenia, nothing can be changed, this is the uh, endemic to Armenia. It's not. If you look at any country in the former Soviet Union, Middle Eastern countries, it's epidemic, the corruption is. But it's not a consolation for us. It's not. We, I think, as a most educated part of the Armenian society here in the United States, we're millions of very educated people. This is a new quality. We didn't have 20 or 30 years ago this kind of capabilities that we have. We have to find out-of-the-box solutions, how we can implement changes so that we can save our money. Now, Renaissance Armenia, as I said, I, I watched this movie for the first time four months ago. These are people who are true patriots. Those guys who are standing over there interviewing these people, they live in Armenia. It's not just they went over there for a couple of weeks. And of course it is to some extent dangerous. Of course there can be all kinds of you know, you know, ramifications, etc., uh, uh, etc. Et but they are doing what they are doing. What, is, what, is, what we would like to do as a community, in the comfort of our homes, by living in California, etc., to use our expertise, our creativity, and our devotion to our nation to see what can be done. I have to tell you, there is no manual, there is no blueprint, there is no previous experience, because what we are trying to do by being a community, we are trying to implement a change in the country, Armenia, halfway around the globe. So this is not this is not an anti-government movement. It's not. I have to say that the government that we have now is much better than we have 10 or 15 years ago. Because not everything bad in Armenia, absolutely, there are the sectors in economy which are blossoming, in particular IT. If you know any known computer company in the West, all of them have offices, they are employing Armenian youth, etc. So there are very good changes, no doubt about this. So again, we don't want to whine about this, everything is bad, it's not. But this is something, because of this social ramifications, political ramifications, etc., that needs to be changed. So 
I know some people can be kind of concerned that anti-government is that it's not. It is not. Uh, we reject any kind of claims to you know it is it is a revolution. We have to change the government, etc. It's not. The only thing is that we have to implement changes, legislative level, executive level, so that doesn't matter who will be running the country today, so that they won't be able to do what they are doing. So, in conclusion, I want to say the following. Uh, I invited um, a Professor Rosatnia here from math department to be present so that she will see what is, uh, what is uh, uh, the activity that we have today. And this is the lady who is called the uh, Italian Erin Brokovic. At the time, four or five years ago, single-handedly, she, she doesn't represent any organization. She is just a math professor at CISA. She went to Italy and saw that one oil companies, very powerful oil companies, are going to start an exploration. Start an exploration in the area which is the known resort in Italy. I, I forgot the name of the answer. So, four or five years, fast forward, she withstood incredible amount of pressure, threats, etc., etc. And she stopped the exploration. All the way, everything was involved. Mass media, Vatican, religious leaders, politicians, of course, corrupt politicians, etc. Et Single-handedly, not an organization, there is not a big Italian community here, and I can tell you, none of the communities, to the best of my knowledge, right, is well organized, organized to the extent as we organize the Romanian community. We are an envy to any other ethnic communities in Los Angeles, everybody is just mentioning this. So we have to benefit from that. And at the end I have to say a couple of things in Armenian, if you do not mind. Men Yerkar Daresh Anka Kutsun Chekmovic. Darero Yerazele Vorbezi Anka Kutsun. Yete Dugnaya Gerchik San San Hing Dareri Patmutsuna. Bolosh Turkey, Parsik, Rus, Arab, Romia, Andranika ira zorkeri mez masa pahom el et masu askanalo burete et masa yev turkeri shat uzume in meri ishorjan el et masa versne. Vorpesi karo anan stepcen irans panturanism asinka mi turkakan yeti vorek skvi meji Mediterranean kebani tovits kagena ayastanov kagena kasti miche chinastani sahmane es panturanismi filosofajuna miak bana vorkhangaluma. Et megri et masa. Yev hima tesak te inchkan hanker ender kan, yev martik chen karov ender apre. Et martik yeke hima hamazvats en musun nasidek, shat lurch hima tutsun erun. Yez gidem vor kazmak et tutsun er, kakfer yasek hayastanu ministru tsyan het, ashkatu mer asen tesnen te, inch tver kan te martik inch besen tarapun yev an yev. Yev es asen, Oknuchan Kadikka, Martin Murashatum and Alpurman and the Hivale, shut the Juan Suner. Ye make Pete Zebet Katank is controlled the Imelo, Bano, Kapek, as a Suzy head. Ye each are a chart named Munek, Uremsa Tarbet Zebet, Ye Mira Bavanakan Asparezum, Ye expertise I Asparezum, Ye Batsarzak Urem et Idianer, the inch pescarelia on them, or Pesi inch for Popokutsuner. When I'm not in the same space as the city, which we give the same space, I can't. I'm not going to be the same space. i Pan-Armenian Environmental Front, UniEdge, and the Armenian Renaissance Los Angeles chapter. I was in the middle of the Renaissance chapter, and I was in the middle of the Renaissance chapter. But I was in the middle of the Renaissance chapter. I was in the middle of the Renaissance chapter.